morning, everyone. Today we are doing a special coffee tasting. I'm your host, Aaron Taylor, and today we're featuring a local small business here in Palm Springs, California. We are featuring the coffee house, Ernest Coffee, and we're going to uh, explore a little bit about the history of this particular small business, and then we're gonna learn a little bit about the people who supply this business with their coffee. The people who supply the business or uh, their coffee uh, is Stumpton Coffee. Uh, they were founded in 1999. Um, so we're going to learn a little bit about this coffee, a little bit about this uh, small business, and we're going to brew their coffee uh, three different ways. So welcome everyone. If you guys are joining me for the first time, Thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button down below. If you guys are returning, welcome back. I appreciate you guys tuning in for a, a second or third or more than that uh, coffee tasting. Um, with this particular blend, we are going to get um, some citrus notes with dark chocolate. And then this blend is a three region blend. So a lot of the times when you get like a blend, it's generally uh, like two coffees mixed together. This one is going to be uh, three regions mixed. So we have Indonesian, uh, Africa, and Latin America. And the Indonesian coffees are going to give us those complex flavor notes, while the African coffee is going to give us those bright citrusy flavors. And the Latin American is going to give us those dark chocolate flavors. This is a very, very complex cup of coffee, and I wanted to brew this cup of coffee three different ways instead of the two different ways that we normally brew our coffee. Normally on this channel, I like to brew on the French press and the pour over um, because they're kind of like opposite spectrums. We get different flavor notes from the different brew method even, if we're, even though we're using the same coffee. Um, but, because this coffee is so complex and the flavors are so intense, I wanted to throw in the Chemex as well to give us a, a much lighter flavor compared to the pour over and the French press. So with the French press, we're gonna get a lot more sediments um, than both the other brews. And then with the pour over, we're gonna get um, a more of a brighter flavor from less of those sediments getting through. And then with the Chemex, we're going to get an even lighter cup of coffee because a lot less of those oils and almost no sediment is getting through because of that triple paper uh, filter. So I just want to uh, thank you guys again for joining me in today's live stream. Uh, today is a particularly, particularly important live stream because it's all about supporting the small businesses and the local coffee shops here in our town and in your town as well. Uh, because we can take a break out of our normal routine uh, from our normal coffee shop that we go to and visit just the hole in the wall that we've never visited to, not just to uh, explore the coffee, but to help support uh, those smaller businesses that don't see as much traffic. But another important part is to explore the different coffees that you wouldn't necessarily get to experience outside of your the normal walls that you uh, your daily routine resides in. So I would definitely encourage you guys to break your current routine and uh, visit the local hole in the wall coffee shop and uh, support the local businesses and um, just encourage that that small town that small town feel of a. a coffee shop with the Ernest coffee shop downtown Palm Springs it has a really interesting vibe it's got like a very um, homey vibe with um, a, a rustic feeling because of the decorations on the inside and then you have a really strong uh, connection with the breezes right off the bat they're very uh, talkative they they connect with you um, and I actually uh, got to talk to one of their uh, workers about coffee, and it was very interesting. He explained to me all the different coffees that they have to offer, um, and he told me a little bit about Stumpton Coffee and how Hairbender is everyone's favorite because of how intense the flavor is. And let me tell you, the 
flavor on this particular cup of coffee does have its complexity. It is, it is a very, very intense cup of coffee. All right, I am gonna grab some more water. I'll be right back, you guys. And so when you're brewing uh, three different ways, the the different brew methods are gonna get different um, like grinds, proportion, um, and then how you brew the coffee is very important too. So when you brew a pour over and a Chemex, what you wanna do is you wanna, when you begin the pour, you wanna just pour around like 40 grams of water or maybe even just count to like uh, 10 when you pour and then you just stop and then let the coffee bloom so when you let the coffee bloom what that is is it's letting the air at the bottom of the grinds escape through the top so when you pour all the water all at once we're uh, trapping the air at the bottom of the grinds and it slows down the brew process and when you slow down the brew process uh, you're actually changing the flavor. You, you don't want that to happen because it impacts the flavor in a negative way. So the reason why we do this is so that the brew process is happening at the right amount of time that it's supposed to elapse so that we're not over brewing, over steeping, and that we're getting those right flavors. So with the uh, Chemex, the grind that we want to use is going to be a medium grind, but it's been going to be on the closer side to French press on the uh, medium grind. Um, if you have a grinder and it's a setting, uh, it would pop a uh, number setting. For my grinder, it's a number seven, while the French press is a number nine. And then the pour over is going to be a little bit on the finer side of the medium, and that is going to be a five. So we grind the uh, paper filter on a number five setting, the uh, Chemex on a number seven, and then the French press on a number nine, which is the actual French press setting on the dial. So we have coarse, uh, medium, semi-coarse, and then medium grind. And getting those proper grinds for your coffee is gonna be very important because the grind and proportion of beans is going to be important to getting the right flavor out of your coffee. Because if you get the wrong proportion, you're, you might get a cup that comes out too bitter and then you might say to someone that you don't like that particular blend or that particular cup of coffee, when in actuality you might not have had that particular cup of coffee brewed the way it's supposed to be brewed. So that's why proportion grind freshness is very important when brewing coffee you guys so if you guys have any questions about like the different proportions and measurements uh, that I'm using for these different uh, brew methods go ahead and throw that down into chat I'd love to answer you guys' questions and then if you guys have a favorite brew that you guys like to drink throw that down into chat too I would love to feature your guys' favorite coffee you know get to explore uh, your guys' favorite uh, blends and then maybe even teach you a little bit about your favorite coffee when I go in and do a little bit of research about it. Maybe teach you something you didn't know. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna taste the pour over of the Stumpton's Hair Bender Blend. So with the Hair Blender Bend, we are getting complex notes from the Indonesian coffee and then we get those bright citrusy flavors from the African coffee and then those dark chocolate notes from the Latin American blend. So this is a three region blend created from Stumpton. Ooh, all right. So we're getting those complex flavors. It's very bright and citrusy. And then it washes away with like a milk chocolate uh, mouthfeel or almost a dark chocolate mouthfeel actually. It's a little bit more darker than milk chocolate. Really smooth on a, on a pour over. It's a, it's a little brighter than I like, but that is still really, really good. All right. 
So now we're gonna try the Chemex. So with the Chemex, it's gonna be uh, much lighter than the actual pour over. And the reason why it's gonna be lighter than the actual pour over is because the triple filter paper is going to allow less oils to make its way through and less sediment as well. We're already getting very little sediment because the paper filter does catch it all, but anything that the paper filter isn't catching in a normal pour over is going to be caught in the Chemex. So this is going to be a very, very clean cup of coffee. There's not gonna be a whole lot of sediments and oils in here. So we're still getting that flavor, but it's gonna be very smooth and clean. And anyone who has like a sensitive stomach to the oils and the sediment of coffee, if they get an, if you get an easily upset stomach from drinking a dark roast or a French press cup of coffee, the Chemex might be good for you because you're getting less oils and less sediment. And so that's also going to impact the flavor, but it could also be a choice you make because of a lifestyle that you have or medical condition. Oh, wow. So with the Chemex, that is crazy. So with the Chemex, not a whole lot of that bright citrusy flavor is making its way through. That is really, really good. We still, we do get a little bit of that bright citrusy flavor. I thought that bright citrusy flavor is going to come a lot, come through a lot more than the pour over, but it, it's actually dying down the citrusy flavor and allowing more of those dark chocolate flavors to come forward. This is a really, really smooth cup of coffee. I really like this. This is, that is good. You get those really, really smooth um, dark chocolate notes with a little bit of bright citrusy flavors, not too much. That's really good. I'm gonna have to go back for some more. Or I should save it for when uh when I do when I talk about this particular coffee. Yeah. Alright, so now let's let's try the French press. So with the French press, we're gonna get a lot more of those oils. We're gonna get a lot more of those sediments. So we're gonna get a much, much darker cup of coffee. So on the pour over, we had that really bright citrusy flavor that took the front seat. It wasn't too intense, but it was definitely driving the cup of coffee. Um, with the Chemex, uh, it was a much more balanced, but very, very mellow, very smooth. So there was not a whole lot of flavor going on. It was very delicious, but um, the flavor wasn't very impactful. So with the French press, we're gonna get uh, somewhat of like a Chemex feel, but on a much uh, darker uh, level. It's gonna be much stronger. And the reason why it's we're gonna get like that Chemex feel is it comes from that balance. Those the sediments are gonna come forward and bring out some of those bitter flavors, and it's going to ma match up with the, those bright citrusy flavors that you got in the pour over. And so when those bitter flavors come up, it's not really taking control of the cup of coffee. It's really meeting the citrus levels on the same plane to where they can complement each other and make a more balanced cup of coffee, just like the Chemex did. The Chemex I thought was gonna be too bright and too acidic, almost like kind of like a black tea. Uh, but um, those milk chocolate or the dark chocolate flavors really came forward and I was very surprised by that. That's really good. So as I smell the French press, I'm definitely getting those dark chocolate whiffs. It's, it definitely has that dark chocolate smell. Oh yeah, okay. So with the French press, we're getting a lot more of those dark chocolate mouthfeels. And then we, we are still getting the, that bright citrusy flavor as well. This is really good. It's a um, really, really bold cup of coffee. So when you try it on the Chemex, it doesn't linger very long. It's a very, very smooth cup of coffee that clears away from the palate pretty quickly. But with this, uh, on the French press, because we have those extra sediments in the cup of coffee, 
we're getting some of those bitters and a little bit of those bright acidic flavors, but mainly those bitters that are attaching to the center of the tongue. So we're left with this like after note of the dark chocolate. So we do get like a balanced flavor at the very beginning where we're getting a little bit of the citrus flavor and a lot of the dark chocolate flavor meeting each other to balance each other out. But then as the palate washes away, the dark chocolate flavor starts to take control of the palate. And that is really good. That's what I look for um, when I drink coffee is any kind of coffee with like a milk chocolate, dark chocolate um, notes with like a caramely sweetness or a toffee nut sweetness. Um, because those uh, caramely notes and the milk chocolate flavors really balance out and make it for a smooth light roast cup of coffee, not like a bold roasty flavor or not like a bright too citrusy tea flavor either. So I tend to go for like the Latin American cup of coffee. And then with the French press, we're really getting those Latin American dark chocolate notes out of this particular hairbender blend. And then if you do want those dark or those dark chocolate notes with the citrusy flavors, but you don't want the citrusy flavor to really control the cup of coffee, I would go with the Chemex. The Chemex is delicious, super smooth, and has those dark chocolate mouthfeel. Excellent, perfect. So now that we've tasted our coffee and we brewed it three different ways, let's learn a little bit about the coffee that we're drinking right now, or the company that we got this uh, coffee from. So the co coffee shop that I got this particular blend from is called Ernest Coffee Shop, and it is located in downtown Palm Springs. Uh, 100 or 1101 North Palm Canyon Road and um, it started off as a restaurant back in the day um, and the restaurant was founded by uh, Ernest Raymond Gant in 1953 and it was called uh, the it was it was a Tiki Tiki restaurant and so this particular coffee shop uh, has dedicated its name to the founder of this tiki restaurant and then has also um, kept most of the decorations up in tribute to this tiki restaurant. And so the founder of the tiki restaurant is Ernest Raymond Gant and so that's where the name of the coffee shop comes from, Ernest Coffee Shop. And so it's dedicated to this small business that existed in Palm Springs in 1953 and in 2013 is when uh, Ernest Coffee Shop arose and started serving the coffee that we have here today, which is supplied by Stumpton Coffee. Now, Stumpton Coffee is also a another uh, coffee roasting company that not a lot of people have heard of. It provides exceptional cups of coffee, and they really highlight the farmers and really tell the, the story of the farmers, which is really cool that we get to explore a little bit about um, where the coffee comes from and get to meet the family. They recently came out with a new coffee um, that I'm going to explore here soon, um, and we get to meet the family who grew the coffee. So I'm really excited about that. But with this particular blend, it is a three region blend, and it's called Hairbend Hairbender Blend. And it was named after one of the uh, first um, beauty salons um, in uh, the region that this uh, company was founded. So it was named after Hairbender. And this particular cup of coffee has citrus and dark chocolate notes. And um, Hairbender uh, Something Coffee was founded in 1999. And it was the first blend that was ever made uh, by the gentleman who uh, founded the Stumpton Coffee. Uh, and the founder of Stumpton Coffee, his name is uh, Dwayne Serrano Serenson. Sorry, Dwayne, I am, I had it all written down and I can't read my own chicken scratch. So there's that, but this, this particular cup of coffee it was, it was founded in 1999, and now we're being supplied, uh, drinking it through Ernest Coffee. 
So it's just one of these things where we're exploring coffee through a small business and helping uh, several different small businesses. Really the, the passion behind these coffee tastings is like learning a little bit about the culture um, and learn a little bit about where our coffee comes from. And so with this particular coffee, we're really supporting the local small business here in Palm Springs and really encouraging people to take a break from their normal routine to visit a hole in the wall coffee shop that you wouldn't normally visit and really exploring the different flavor notes that that particular coffee has. And then at the same time, we're also helping other small business coffees or small businesses thrive too because the small business coffee shops are most likely being supplied by coffee from another small business roasting plant. So with this, we're supporting a local small business, Ernest Coffee, and then we're supporting another small business, Stumpton Coffee, uh, by really encouraging people to go out there and visit these uh, small on the wall coffee shops and really supporting uh, your local community by, uh, like I said, breaking your normal routine, even if it's just one day out of the week and really visiting uh, that place that you wouldn't normally visit. And so that is Ernest Coffee and Stumpton Coffee. I really encourage you guys, if you guys are visiting Palm Springs, or if you guys live in Palm Springs, um, to stop by Ernest Coffee Grab a cup of coffee for the hair bender blend. They have much, uh, much more to offer there as well. They have exotic lattes as well, like uh, lavender and rose and other things like that. So uh, give them uh, a good look into, stop by. They are a little busy, but they're busy because they give you that feeling of like a rustic coffee shop that you, that you only get from them. You, you don't get that experience from anywhere else. And that's what's important about it is that, that feeling you get. And then the just being able to explore different coffees that you wouldn't normally get to explore uh, in the normal walls that, you, uh, that we stay in. So thank you everyone for joining today's coffee tasting. I hope you guys thought it was really cool. Um, we got to explore uh, a local small business and we got to explore a new brewing process, the Chemex. If you guys would like me to continue to do the three different brewing processes, the Chemex, the pour over, and the French press, go ahead and throw that down in the chat. I'd love to hear you guys' feedback on what kind of brew processes you like to see me to do. Um, and then again, if you guys have a favorite blend of coffee, go ahead and throw that down in the chat as well i would love to feature your guys's coffee and really taste those flavor notes and then teach you a little bit about where your favorite coffee came from if you guys enjoyed today's coffee tasting go ahead and hit the link down below that is a list of videos that i have done in the past the link above is just a video that youtube thinks that you might like thanks again for joining today's coffee tasting and have a great day